This is a Raspberry Pi Pico with a display pack. In my earlier video, I showed how you can display images and animations on the screen. In this video, I'm going to show how the same technique can be used for creating sprites, small bitmap images, and how you can move them around the screen as part of a game. This is going to be written in MicroPython and achieved by replicating some of the features of the Pygame Zero actor class. This will make it easier for someone who has previously written games in Pygame Zero to be able to create a similar program on the Raspberry Pi Pico. There are some significant limitations due to the size of the screen, the processing capability, amount of memory and the number of buttons on the Pico display. So I'll be covering all those. Although this is designed for the Pico display, I'll also mention the Pico Explorer, which you may also want to consider. As a practical example, I've based this on a game from my book beginning game programming with Pygame Zero. Specifically, this is based on my space shooter game, which involves a spacecraft flying through an asteroid field, having to shoot asteroids out of the way. I won't be implementing a full game here, but I will show you how to create the spacecraft sprite and move it around the screen. In my earlier video, I explained how to write data to the Pico display screen. This is done by creating a byte array, which holds the colour information for each pixel. In that video, I also talked about how the colour information is reduced from 3 bytes per pixel to 2 bytes. This is shown in this visual, but for more details see my other video or the web page linked in the description. Due to the performance of the Pico, the sprite has to be converted from a PNG file to a RAW format that is easier to process on the Pico. When creating a full screen image, this was stored in the same format as the byte array in a RAW image format. In the case of the sprite, the image file needs to include information on the width and height of the sprite. These are stored as the first two bytes of the file, with the width followed by the height. These are 8-bit values, so allows a maximum image size of 255 by 255 pixels. I also needed to include some way of holding transparency information. I used black, represented by red, green and blue, all having a value of 0. Any pixel that needs to be black, rather than transparent, has the least significant bit of the blue colour set to 1. This is a very slight blue tint to the colour, but it's not noticeable when shown on the Pico display screen. To make it easier for anyone who has programmed using Pygame Zero, then I created a simplified actor class, which is similar to the actor used in Pygame Zero. This creates a sprite, known as an actor, from a bitmap image. The sprite is a draw method, which shows the sprite on the screen, it can be moved around the screen using the X and Y coordinates and can be rotated to face a different direction. There are however some limitations to this which are necessary to keep the amount of memory on the Pico and to be able to achieve an acceptable performance. One example I've already mentioned is the need for the files to be provided in a specific format. Another is that the rotation is only performed in 90 degree increments. In the case of rotation you can specify the angle rotation in smaller degree increments but it will only rotate when it gets closer to the next increment. Also, the position can only be specified based on the centre of the sprite, although it should be possible to add additional code to translate between different positions if that is required. I haven't yet added any of the collision detection code. The use of a transparent pixel colour means it should be possible to detect a collide by pixel only when it's on the sprite rather than on a transparent pixel that's around it. This is a quick look at the actor class code. It's quite long, so I'll just quickly skim through the code and the methods. The constructor needs the display object to be passed to it. This is so that it knows about the extent of the display and how the actor will behave when on the, off the screen. There's a new attribute, enable transparency, which can be disabled if you'd like to be able to show true black colour instead of transparency. The image and angle are set using a Python property function. This allows methods to be called when the attribute changes such as validate the entry or to load a new image. The image is stored in the raw format in a byte array image underscore data. The draw method is responsible for copying the pixels from the spiked byte array directly to the byte array used for the screen. This needs the display buffer to be provided as an argument. The draw method also handles the rotation of the image by reading the pixels in a different order based on rotation. This is handled using the get sprite data method. The get rotate height and width methods are provided to take a rotated height and width into consideration. 
If due to a rotation the height and width differ from the original then this will return the dimensions based on the current rotation. There are then two more methods which are used to translate x and y coordinates into the position in the respective buffers. The space game Python file provides an example of how you can use the actor class to draw a sprite on the screen. It creates an instance of the actor class which is called Spaceship which it draws on the screen. It uses the four buttons of the Pico display to allow for movement of the sprite. This is a little limited by having it only four buttons. It would be useful to have at least one more so that you can move the spacecraft around as well as a fire button. For more buttons you could use a Pico Explorer board which has additional GPIO pins available or some other add-on for the Pico. I've included the blit image file function in this code which is from the previous video on animation. It's not currently used but could be used to draw a background image using one file and then use the actor class to have sprites that the player can interact with. And here is a quick demonstration of the sprite moving around based on pressing the buttons on the display. This is only starting point for how you can create games on the Pico using bitmap images of sprites. There are then other things you may later consider and you may have to do some things differently. In the games I've created using Pygame Zero, then I've often swapped the sprite images to animate a sprite. For example, when writing code in Pygame Zero, when I've wanted to show a person walking, I've created multiple images with a person's leg in different positions. This is possible using this code, but it's likely to be slow. It would be better to have a single image showing the parts of the sprite that don't change, but then the legs in a separately perhaps using vector images that I showed in an early video. You may also need to be careful about memory use. Due to the relative small amount of memory on the Pico and the amount of memory needed to update the dis entire display, then you may need to ensure your code does not create too many different sprites, or that they don't need so much memory. I've already discussed a few possible ideas on my video on creating animations in the Pico. There are more details on my website, including the source code. See the list links in the description. I hope this has been useful. You may need to study the source code to understand this fully, and I've included quite a few comments in the code to explain what is happening. It should at least provide some information for those interested in bitmap sprites with the Raspberry Pi Pico or other microcontrollers that also support MicroPython. I'll be covering different projects in future, including ones around the Raspberry Pi Pico, guides to programming and other maker related topics. If you've not already subscribed then please do so to get notified about my future videos as I release them. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.